the urgency of the coronavirus pandemic has seen an unprecedented surge in scientific innovation. One breakthrough originates right beneath us. Wastewater tells an intriguing tale of a city and the movement of a virus in all its mutations. An early warning system, but strangely, one that some governments are turning their noses up at. Well, it does stink. No one wants to talk about it or go anywhere near it. But monitoring wastewater for traces of a pathogen can provide a detailed picture of an entire community without the biases and limitations of regular testing methods. This sewage treatment plant in Frankfurt may not look very exciting, but there's a lot more to wastewater than meets the eye. Professor Susanna Lackner analyzes it to detect the presence of the novel coronavirus. The wastewater can also give us information about which mutations are to be found in which catchment areas. The environmental scientist and her team at the Technical University of Darmstadt have developed a method to monitor how much virus is circulating in a particular area and to identify which strains are present to see if, say, the Brazilian or British ones are spreading. The method has met with considerable interest in other countries. As we see it, the method is ready for use, and it is in fact already being used in the Netherlands, the United States and Spain in cooperation with their health authorities. It's not being used in Germany, even though it could function as an early warning system. If it finds the virus in one sewer but not in another, that could help public health authorities focus attention and resources on areas where trouble is brewing, even if the people there who are shedding the virus have no symptoms and have not been tested. You could use the data to estimate the infection rate in the catchment area around the sewage treatment plant. That could help you decide if you need to do more or less testing or whether or not to relax restrictions based on the readings you're getting from the water. It's not clear why authorities in Germany won't embrace this early warning system. The method was developed in cooperation with the Frankfurt Sanitation Department. But the city hasn't started to use it. We asked the health department why that is. In a written response, it expressed doubts about its practicability. At the University of Bonn, we talked to Martin Exner, a professor of public health, who approves of the new method and thinks it should be used. This is how he interprets the authorities' reticence to deploy it. It appears they're abiding by rigid principles and are finding it hard to embrace new ideas, such as wastewater monitoring. I think we need to both demand more courage and offer more encouragement in this area. Germany's Association of Towns and Municipalities has also weighed in on the issue. Anything that helps us combat the pandemic should be made available. That includes monitoring wastewater. But for now, this potentially valuable system developed in Germany is not being used in Germany. Critics say that's down to an abundance of bureaucracy and a lack of courage. And warn that in the worst case, such inertia could cost lives. And you would have seen Susanna Lackner in that report. She's a professor for wastewater engineering and joins us today. Thanks for joining us and being on the show. Why do you think Germany hasn't embraced this early warning system of yours? Well, thanks for having me. And, um, well, I think it's, it's, a, it's a federal issue in Germany. We have the, the organisation in the, in the States and the system that we have between the wastewater sector and the public health sector is not, is not prepared for, for what we are facing and there's, it's basically a lack of communication, I would say. Some authorities argue that this system isn't practical. Do you agree? Uh, no. I mean, we, we are ready. Um, we have the methodologies ready. We, we, can, we can start um, the analysis anytime, I think. Um, we have to be aware of the limitations, but the, it's definitely out of the experimental stage. Okay. To understand this, let, let me pose the question differently. Why have the Netherlands and Spain and the United States embraced this system? I mean, for the Netherlands, as far as I understand, I mean, they, they have, first of all, done this already um, 
years ago with, with the polio virus, and there's a, a much better connection between the public health sector and the water sector already. And um, they seem to have a better management of, or also see a more uh, more potential in this in this type of information. And I think that's why they are um, ahead of us. Um, maybe to add on that, I hope that in Germany we will uh, improve because also the European Union just posted uh, recommendations to include wastewater-based epidemiology and, and wastewater-based monitoring um, and will support the member states. So I, I'm, I'm still optimistic that we can also move along with this in Germany. Well, Susanna, could you explain to us how it actually works, your system? Um, what we do is uh, usually we take uh, samples from, a, or we get samples from a wastewater treatment plant over over 24 hours. They are collected. Um, we bring it to the lab. We we do some some preparation and and extraction, and then we basically go ahead with a similar analysis uh, or tools that uh, are used in the in the medical uh, sector. Um, one is the the quantitative PCR, and the other is the sequencing, and we we get different types of information from from this analysis. And the information you get, you've said, is less biased than official figures. Could you explain that to viewers? Yes, I mean, what, what we get is basically an unbiased picture um, of what's happen in, happening in the, in the catchment of that treatment plant because people may not want to get tested or may not feel sick, but they all, all go to the toilet. So um, that's why we get, a, a in, in that sense, a better picture of, of what's going on. And... Um, even though it's it's basically a pool sample that that we have, we can still monitor um, loads of the virus coming in, or even now um, the mutations that are in a certain catchment. And, and can the data also be used to estimate the the actual number of infected people? Um, from what we've done, I would be hesitant to do that. I know colleagues have tried that, but in, in that sense, I, I would say we don't know enough uh, from the from the medical side how many uh, or, how, or how much virus one person actually excretes and um, I, would, I wouldn't do that but I'm a wastewater engineer so maybe the medical people uh, are, are more <laughs> capable of doing that. Um, at the end of the day, couldn't this also be used to trace other diseases, other infections? Definitely. I mean, um, I, I think everything that is somewhat um, in the water and can be spread by, by water um, or through through the wastewater can be detected. And I mean, we are also working on, on antimicrobial resistances and that is a big issue and it will, will remain a big issue. And I think we can also use everything that's now done and all the concepts that are made um, for tracking resistance genes or even other pathogens, bacteria, viruses, um, everything that is, okay. that is um, that goes through water. Let's hope that uh, the Germans can overcome their bureaucratic problems and, and take this on. It would be nice to see. Susanna Lachner, great to have you on the show today. Thank you. Well, from one star scientist to my favourite scientist and correspondent, Derek Williams, with the questions you guys have been leaving on our YouTube channel. Please explain the difference between a new strain and a new variant. This is tough to do since even virologists seem to view the differences as fairly fluid. But, but let's start by maybe going over some of the other biology basics that you've, you've probably learned this year already. Um, first is that although it's technically not considered alive, um, a virus evolves constantly as it replicates, just like living things do. Um, it's genetic code changes because mistakes happen as the code is copied by a living cell. That gives rise to what are commonly known as mutants. Um, now, for complicated biological reasons, not every mutation leads to actual physical changes in a virus's structure. But, but when it does, you can begin thinking of that mutant as a variant. Um, now, a variant is generally considered a strain when it's wandered even farther down that road and acquired characteristics and, and behaviors based on its new structure that clearly distinguish it from other earlier forms. So you could say that although all strains are variants, not all variants are strains. 
let's maybe make a comparison from the macro world. Um, we've been genetically engineering dogs for thousands of years through selective breeding. And it's pretty astounding how, how different they can look. But dogs all share common characteristics that allow you to instantly identify an animal as a dog, whether it's a Chihuahua or a Newfoundland. Um, the different breeds can be viewed as variants on the canine genome. But go far enough back and, and split off another evolutionary branch and you end up with the modern wolf, which has a common ancestor, but some distinct characteristics and behaviors that allow us to instantly identify it as a wolf. So if they were viruses, then breeds of dogs would be variants, while dogs and wolves would be strains. Now, I'm the first to admit that the analogy is imperfect, but maybe it makes the terms a little easier to grasp. So mutants, variants, strains. Thank you, Derek. And in more dog news, the pandemic has led to a boom in pet ownership, but that's also seen a rise in animal trafficking. German police saved these little cuties suffering from diarrhea and exhaustion. They were passing from Hungary through a German motorway check on their way to Belgium. There were 101 pups. It's believed their papers were fake. The illegal trade is booming in Europe, so be careful what you buy. Activists say 8 million puppies are trafficked every year. It can have a huge impact on the health and welfare of the animals. Tax evasion is also an issue. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and see you again soon.